or you can do all those things and so much more. Just grab a seat in the chair with the floor. Sit back, relax, recline. While she drops another casual line. You're tuned in to Casually Molly with Molly and Boogie. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Casually Molly podcast. I am your host, Molly Ambergy. And after a few months of a hiatus, we'll put it that way, um, I am so happy to be back and returning to record our second half of the season eight season. Uh, very exciting stuff. Before we get into our upcoming guests, I did want to let everybody know that our comedy showcase, This Is Casually Happening, is returning back to the Golden Hoosier on Wednesday, November 15th and De Wednesday, December 13th. On November 15th, we are so excited because we are going to have headliner Mary Jane. She's been on plenty of our shows. She won 2021's Comedian of the Year. Uh, you won't want to miss out on that. And of course, we've got our features, Emily Zell and Ellie Kirchhofer. Emily Zell is a Midwest favorite and also a Funny Bone favorite. And of course, we have Ellie Kirchhofer, who is a favorite all over the Midwest as well. And along with our showcase got recently recognized in the November 2023 issue of St. Louis Magazine. On Wednesday, December 13th, we will have headliner J.B. Buchanan. Uh, he's been making waves in comedy and traveling with Samuel Comro from America's Got Talent. And of course, other local favorites such as Jake Beckman and Meredith Hopping and your girl will be hosting both shows. Uh, so just make sure to check that out on our website, thecasuallymollypodcast.com. You can also check out our tickets on eventbrite.com too. And just either if you've got some questions, you're like, hey, I'm looking for tickets. What can I do? Maybe we need an interview for the show. No problem at all. Just email casuallymolly at gmail.com. Um, now that we've got all of our excitement out of the way for this is casually happening, what's going to casually happen now is we are going to talk about our upcoming guests. They have a great podcast called That's Messed Up, where they break down a classic episode of Law & Order SV. You. Yes, that's right. If you were obsessed with it like I am and still are, this is going to be the episode for you. Comedians Lisa Traeger and Kara Clank were absolutely hilarious, and I'm not just saying that because they were on this podcast, but they were amazing. And if you needed a good laugh about Law & Order, you can also laugh about Bravo. Uh, we just dive into Salt Lake City, Below Deck, you name it, Luann Deliceps, we covered it. And of course, having this be in St. Louis, I couldn't resist, but ask them about their appearance on Andy Cohen's Clubhouse. So if you are interested in any of the topics, which you should be, you should definitely listen to this episode right now. Thanks so much, everyone. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Casually Molly podcast. I am your host, Molly Ambergy, where we interview different artists, comedians, and entertainers, both locally as well as from around the country. Of course, for anybody that's familiar in the area, we have a beloved comedy club here, Helium Comedy Club St. Louis, and you don't want to miss this upcoming show. It is going to be happening November 9th at Helium. Let me tell you what, you better get those tickets because the reserved options have already sold out. These girls are hilarious. They are known for their hit podcast, That's Messed Up. Please give it up for Lisa Traeger and Kara Clank, everybody. Yes, the crowd is going wild. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, St. Louis. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you again. I know we talked about this earlier before we started recording, but thank you for joining us from your hotel rooms. Where are you guys? Are you guys in the same place right now? What's going on? Yeah, we're in Detroit. Okay. We were about to do a show here tonight. Yeah. Oh, we were wow. in Toronto last night and we'll be in Pittsburgh tomorrow. So it's um it's tight. It's fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, how have the shows been going? Uh, I know we talked about this a little bit too, but what can we expect for people? Obviously, people that'll be listening are big fans of the podcast, but I know you had mentioned drag along. So why don't you talk oh, yeah. a little bit for those drag alongs that are listening that are like, hey, why should we get excited for the show? Uh, just let them know what's up and what we should expect. I mean, we're really funny and talented and we have a great dynamic, <laughs> not, to, uh, not to toot our own horn. Um, but, you know, we get like sad boyfriends that don't want to be there. And by the end, they're leaned in and they're laughing, you know, so um, one bearded boyfriend at a time from coast to coast. We yeah. so. You don't even ha you don't have to be a listener of our podcast to enjoy our live show. You don't even have to watch SVU. We get people that listen to our podcast that don't even watch the show. They don't even know what characters look like until they see our gorgeous PowerPoint that we do in our live shows. 
That's my we favorite. Are. When a friend goes, that's what Munch looks like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Legendary. Yeah. As a fan of Law & Order SVU, I'm loving, I was like, oh my God, Munch. But of course, like, you know, my man Stavler, I'm always there for him. Yeah. So uh, that was like my dream husband as a child growing up. So the fact <laughs> that you guys are doing this, like I forgot, like when he left the show, you don't know, I mean, I'm sure listeners under I was so devastated I was like there goes my husband there there he goes but what I I gotta know what made you guys decide like was did you just both have an obsession with SVU like what made you decide like hey we need to make a PowerPoint we need to make a show we got to make a podcast about this like what were the humble beginnings that got it to where it is today well the podcast came first um the podcast came first and Basically, we both had seen every episode of SVU multiple times. I mean, both of us have traveled for comedy for a long time. It's obviously a huge hotel show, but in it's general, it's on mute like, right now. It's yeah. on mute on my TV <laughs> in this hotel at the moment. Uh, like, in, I'm looking yeah. at your husband's stabler at, at this. Very yes. <laughs> so you um, liked a rough man. I am judging you. Yeah, a I was gonna bit. say we all grew up on a man who just like is really Toxic does masculinity. Know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember, you know, things have changed. Uh, now I definitely have somebody who's a little bit more gentler in my life. So <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, I hope he's not throwing you against file ca filing cabinets, but. Oh, God, we, no. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, unless that's what you're into. No, um, but, but yeah, like we started the podcast um, as like sort of a way to you know showcase our love of the show but also like a way into true crime because we're both really into true crime and then we also um interview actors from the show which we love as well because we'll talk to people not only about their svu roles but their careers and life choices and stuff like that and we, we're both little chatty cathies and we like to talk to people so that's that and then when we decided to start touring with the show we were like all right let's let's cut the true crime part out of the live show because it's, you know, for a lot of people, this is a night out. They got a babysitter. They don't need to hear about somebody getting strangled to death and left on railroad tracks, you know? So we cut that out and we decided to do like a fun PowerPoint with it too, so that there's like a visual aspect. And then we play some games and. And we do the episodes all... on the road that are not based on true crime. So for the podcast, they're true crime. And then we try to pick like, the cult favorites, the really kind of more wacky episodes for our live shows where, you know, it's not as gruesome. Sure, there's a dead person, but it's not, you know, a pile of murdered children, stuff like that. We try to keep it more light in the live shows. Absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. That totally makes sense. And I can definitely see like, even though are you guys like, obviously you're in different rooms right now, but you guys have the best dynamic just even coming off of the screen. So if anybody's watching, <laughs> like, this is amazing. I love it. You know, speaking of though, like with the live shows, you talk about like, oh, you know, with the we kind of keep it light and everything. Was there like a specific audience reaction that you can remember that you were like, oh, this is super memorable. That's like a core memory for you. Well, we have um, one deleted scene that we like to play, and it's really shocking. And so we really like the reaction from the audience every time we play it. People are shocked, and they like, <laughs> what's that? What is it called? Gasp. They gasp. <laughs> um, and we've recently started taping their reactions because it is, um, it makes us happy. Oh, absolutely. I feel like it's like when somebody's going down a roller coaster and you've got a picture probably and you're like, oh my gosh, you look back on that. That's probably what you're doing when you're looking back. Yeah, on we're this. trying mm -hmm. to do like a Blumhouse super cut of like, you know, when they show people in, in the movie theater, like freaking out <laughs> of a jump scare. Yes. That's our vibe. Oh, I love it. But it's general... not a scary thing. It's a, it's no. a shocking thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You have to come um, to the show if you want to find out what it is. Yeah, that's a real tease we did. Um, <laughs> the reactions are cute. I, I don't know if this is as much of a reaction, but I know both Karen and I really love, we love seeing family, like mom and daughters come out, sisters are there. Someone Sometimes people bring their dads and, or it's like childhood best friends who've been friends for decades and they share their, like our love of SVU and we love just seeing some, like connections between people. It's really cheesy, uh, but I really like seeing 
families and friendships. Oh, well, there you go. See, that's an uplifting part of a comedy podcast. We also <laughs> like family <laughs> relationships. We sometimes have a cheesy thing, but you can also get a gruesome episode out of it too. So there's there's a lot of balance at the show. Exactly why you should come because tickets are selling, um, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, I'll also talk about, you guys are both you know, comedians, what made you, I know this is like kind of a generic question, but uh, was there a specific reason why comedy was big for you guys and you felt drawn for it, uh, especially women in the industry? Uh, I have a lot of girlfriends who would be so interested in knowing what made you start in comedy clubs or wherever your origin story began. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, I don't know if this, this isn't why I started, um, but <laughs> I like uh, the hours. I like the casual nature. I like not having a boss. You know, it's like a good time. Mm -hmm. um, you get to be honest with yourself and with others and connect. Um, you get to drink at work. Um, you don't have to wake up in the mornings. It's like kind of, um, except for flights, I'm lying. Um, <laughs> but I love the honesty in between people. I mean, that's a lie. We know, we know a lot of crazy liars too. Um, <laughs> But what got me into it, I think I was meant to do it. I really, I didn't know it was a thing you can do. And then once I like stumbled into it accidentally at an open mic, I was like, oh, this is the best. I love talking. No one can argue. It's my opinion. This is the best. So it really fits my personality of wanting to talk all the time and being <laughs> casual. You can wear what you want. Like you get to be yourself. It's, it's really um, a perk. Absolutely. What about you, Kara? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the oldest of six kids, so I just have, like I've always been competing for attention, I guess, which is, you know, I think at the bottom of all comedians' hearts uh, is that we love attention and to make people laugh. But um, yeah, I started out doing improv and I was like, I would never do stand up, like repeating the same material. Come on. I'm, the magic <laughs> of improv is the only thing for me. And then I was like, <laughs> and then I started. Honestly, I started stand up out of spite. I saw a friend do it and I was like, I could do that. And I started doing it like because of that. And I loved it so much right away and was like, this is so much better than improv. Like you're just on your own. Like when you do well, you do well. When you do badly, you do badly. It's like your own thing. And I do love to work in group settings, but with stand up, I like that it's kind of like your own thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's no, these are great answers. I love that there was a variety of something where it's just like, oh, I started this in spite and it's like, oh, I got to be myself. It, it's great. I love it. <laughs> um, which leads me to my next question. When, so obviously like a lot of comedians have podcasts, right? Like clearly even in our studio, I do comedy. We've got this interview podcast, but um, when you guys are doing something like that's messed up, which you should, again, see at Helium Comedy Club St. Louis on November 9th. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just going to keep casually saying this Love until it. people buy all the tickets in the house. Um, when you're, what is the difference, I guess, for your delivery when you're doing stand-up versus when you're doing a live podcast show for an audience? Like, what do you see difference-wise or maybe the same when you're doing one or the other? What's kind of your thought process on that? Um, I think I'm a little more desperate when I do stand up. Like I just need constant laughter or validation nonstop. And I feel like with the podcast, it's a little bit, you know, there are moments <laughs> where they're describing what fluids are found on a body. And so it's like, um, the moments of calm or the moments and, and we get to work off of each other, but it is more conversational, I would say not as yeah. focused on thing it's like you know if kara says something or something happens in an episode i can jump in with a story and um i guess i could do that with stand-up too but i would say it's i'm it's more casual i feel more casual we're sitting we have each other and um the people are obsessed with us oftentimes with stand-up there's strangers there that don't know who, who like i am let's say and you have to win people over and here people they really do like us Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, they can't, yeah, like <laughs> they didn't come to a comedy club thinking like, okay, who's this make me laugh, you know, whereas mm -hmm. like these people kind of like know what they're coming for. But if you don't know what you're coming for, you can still come. Um, but I agree. Like, I'm the same as Lisa. Like, when you're doing stand-up, if there's silence, you're like, oh, no, oh, no. But like, the, you can let it breathe a little bit more on a, a live podcast. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you want to say something, Lisa? Oh, yeah. And um, we allow, <laughs> I mean, sometimes our girls get drunk and I would say we let them, we let them talk a little bit more in their podcast shows than stand up. If they need to shout out, we let them have it absolutely. because we're, 
they're listening to us as they're living their lives. So I think, um, what is it? The paranormal, not paranormal, parasocial relationship. And so <laughs> yeah. sometimes they will, they'll just start talking to us while we're on stage because they're used to it. Oh, I love it. And I love that they get so into it. It's so interactive. I think that's awesome. And especially like, that's what the nice part is about podcasts too, is that there is a comfort level. So when you go in, you're familiar with everything, you're able to see everyone. Um, and speaking also too, since you guys are so awesome, um, how did you guys meet? And you were like, hey, I feel like we should create this podcast together. Well, I was perform. I always, I, we knew of each other because comedy, right. um, mm -hmm. but when I moved to New York, I got to perform on the show Kara ran called If You Build It. Ooh, okay. And we yeah. bonded over SVU immediately. It was sick. Um, I don't know. It just like came <laughs> out. Um, yeah, she was like, you have to follow this Twitter account called Doink Doink. It tells you whenever there's an SVU or a criminal intent or a regular Law & Order playing and what channel it's on. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And then I had this idea for the podcast through like a conversation with another friend that was like, I just was saying, oh, I've seen every episode of SVU like multiple times. And she was like, oh, you should do a podcast. And then I actually had another friend that I was working with on it, but she was like, she just was like, I feel like I'm really busy for this. And Lisa was at my house working on a separate project. And I was like, wait a minute. And it was just like a lightning strikes kind of moment where I was like, fuck, I forgot that. Sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to swear on this. Oh, that's a, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want. You're totally I was okay. like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I forgot that that's like one of the first things you and I ever talked about was that we both love this show. So oh my God. I mentioned it to her and was like, would you be down to do this? And like within a week, her at the time manager like had us set up in like meetings pitching it. So it was a quick... We were, we hit the ground running as they say. Yes. I'm so glad that you did. And obviously it's worked out for you very well. Well, yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Kara came prepared. So like when we started, there was multiple spreadsheets. So we were ready to go. You know what I mean? Get out. Love a she good had spreadsheet. She episodes yes. ready, the crimes organized, like everything was kind of ready to go. Yes. Oh my. I and mean, clearly it worked out. And so, yeah, like I said, love a good spreadsheet, love the prepared. And it's but great. But it makes sense. Oh, go now ahead. that I know mm -hmm. Kara so well, it's like, of course, it's a podcast with the most amount of homework you can ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do so much work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm curious now that I wasn't even thinking about this as a question, but, you know, you're saying like there's a lot of work. Like, how much work behind the scenes do you feel like you put in with all the spreadsheets? Well, we have and whatnot? to like. <laughs> We have to, we have to, first of all, we have to like bounce around the season in the appropriate way. Like we have to, you know, spread it out. Have we not done enough episodes from season 10? What about season 17? I mean, there's 24 episode, seasons of this show and over 500 episodes. So there's that. Then we have to, what we watch the episode and recap it. Then the other one, whoever's not doing that, even though the other one has to watch the episode too, the other one researches the crime that it's based on. And that can be really in depth depending on whether we're talking about like you know a one time like a one night incident or like a serial killer and then uh we interview we interview an actor from the show and that's like have they been in multiple episodes do we need to watch their other episode do we have to like check out their imdb look like their wikipedia find out all about them so that we can like come up with interesting questions to ask them so it ends up being a lot of prep Mm -hmm. Oh, I think yeah, that. and, that's crazy. And mm -hmm. like, and then for the live shows, we're making the PowerPoints and then the yeah. notes for the show. And then we don't want to repeat cities um, with the episodes we have. And so it's like shuffling kind of where we do the episode because sometimes people will go to multiple cities. And so if the cities are close, yeah. we try not to overlap. But in terms of crime research, it's like sometimes it's a small town crime. There's a couple articles that didn't really become national news um it's a straight it's a straight case you know guilty you're in jail it's fine but then you get the scott petersons the eileen warnos you know and those have decades of information yeah and so um that's sometimes um or like lots of documentaries and so sometimes you it's so much information and you have to filter through it all and come up with your own creative way to talk about the case that hasn't been done a bunch of times but also on the other side like sometimes it's such a small case 
that it's impossible to find information or the judge had a, uh, not a chokehold, a gag order. So like no one could talk to the press during it. And so then you're signing up for these weird papers in the middle of nowhere. And so it just, it always depends a little bit. With the crime. Oh, I'm so impressed because I, and I, yeah. I asked that because it, it just jogged my memory. You mentioned spreadsheets, but I feel like people all the time, they listen to a podcast and it's like, great, like yours, right? It has a great following. It's really exciting. People love the niche of it. Um, but I feel like people don't really think Think about like it's just like oh they just fly in they talk about the episode here's a powerpoint that she just had laying around and that's that so i really respect the both of you for you know doing what you're doing and the prep work that you go into it uh because then it pays off right because then you end up at uh andy's clubhouse so <laughs> oh yeah yeah and that was the goal we almost quit after we did that you know oh my gosh so yeah because obviously our podcast as we mentioned earlier it's in st louis and we're big fans of andy cohen here his hometown he's got the cardinals had and his St. Louis uh, gear in the different bookcases and whatnot on the show. But why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what it was like being, I, were you guys at the, the bar, right? Were you yeah, we were the bartenders. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. What was it like being a bartender in the clubhouse? I mean, I mean it, it was, was just amazing. Real. We're like huge yeah. Bravo fans to the point, and we brought we each mm -hmm. brought a friend um, who also was obsessed. But like as we walked into the room, there was a cardboard cutout of Andy Cohen, and I was like, oh, "We have to take a photo." And then it hit us that like, "No, we're gonna see the real Andy Cohen." You know, I was just like so <laughs> excited by the cardboard that like the idea would be a real man. It was wild. Mm -hmm. um, the green room is decorated. The wallpaper is so beautiful. It's little gemstones. Everyone is so nice that works there. And they get you boozed up. So that's kind of fun. They give you drinks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, but I, I fucked up. I, I was too starstruck. He would ask questions and I felt like I was a, a circuiting, like a short circuiting robot. I like couldn't put words together. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, but he could but tell we loved him. And he said, he goes, Aww. I love the bartenders. And he doesn't really engage with the bartenders that often. So that felt cute. good. Yeah. Absolutely. He told us, he told us we were like his hype squad and we were like, yes, forever and always. So oh my God. it was awesome. And uh, yeah, it was so fun. Oh my like, goodness. And our outfits were cool. Like, oh, the outfits it's also, were cute. Mm -hmm. um, it's always nice to do, you know, things where you get some glam and. Oh no, the you pictures know. were so cute. Of course, when I was talking to you guys on Instagram, I was like, oh, and I'm a I'm a Bravo aficionado myself, obviously. So <laughs> I was really excited. Are you like, do you guys have like a specific show on Bravo that you're both obsessed with? Should we expect another podcast from that <laughs> niche? What's happening? Well, we're well, both we have a Patreon. people. Oh yeah. Oh. We do have a Patreon that's mm -hmm. called um it's patreon.com slash name dropping, because our Patreon is name dropping. And uh, we talk about Bravo on there. We talk about Drag Race. We talk about all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's sort of like our not SVU mm -hmm. combos. And, um, but I would say like I'm Housewives mostly all the way. And then like I'll, I dabble a little bit in Vanderpump Rules and stuff like that. But mostly offshoots of the Housewives. Lisa's more comprehensive, the, the below decks, the seasonal houses, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but last night in the hotel in Toronto, we watched the new, um, the premiere of Winter House, which was exciting. And I was um, sold. Done. <laughs> um, but I'm, you know, I'm really excited for the return of Real Housewives of Miami, like that. I think they are, are really bringing it, um, but... I love Evan, everything Andy's throwing down. Watch what happened. I, I watch it all. Or I'll, I'll even watch spy games. I watch the reality show where people were competing to be spies. Like, I will watch <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. Yes, I love, see, and I, I love the housewives, but my best friend, she's all about the below deck thing, but so she's been telling, we gotta, I have to watch Winter House now, especially now that both of you are sold, I better get on that, now that it, it should be up on streaming services, I think, but that's well, awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. It'll definitely be on Peacock, but Winter House is, <laughs> they're all, except for one couple, they're all single, and that's, that's pretty fun because yeah. they're just there to hook up and get drunk and fight. So there we go. We love that. <laughs> yeah, we do. I love it. I love it. And then of course, but, yeah, and we, that's great. <laughs> and we always talk about how like now with Bravo, with all the crimes being committed, it is like we hope that one of the crimes are used for an SVU and then we can cover 
a Bravo crime, <laughs> but the fact that they haven't had an Erica Jane episode or a Jen Shaw kills me. I like don't understand it. Yes. Oh, I'm totally with you. I just, I just finished, I was behind on Salt Lake City and I've, now that I've watched it, I'm like, oh my God, the bus, everything, Jen Shaw, what's happening? It's, it's wild. <laughs> oh, you're there. Um, have you caught up on this season where they went to the Trixie Motel? Oh, <laughs> No, I haven't, but I've seen everything on TikTok, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to watch Winter House and then watch the Trixie Motel and get back to you on November 9th when everybody gets their tickets to come see your show. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes I forget I don't work for Bravo. Um, (laughs) No, Salt Lake, they just, it was, it was, I just love to be entertained. Both Kara and I are big TV people in general, you know. I'm with you. Um, Mm -hmm. But... Bravo delivers in a way that I'm really grateful for. <laughs> it brings it. people together, we always say. Bravo mm-hmm. really brings people together. Oh, yeah, especially when the Vanderpump Rules scandal went down. I feel like there was just like, you know, obviously like, and Tom Sandoval is from St. Louis and like, man, I got to tell you. Oh, no. The unity that we had of <laughs> hatred towards him. It was just so, like, you believe in humanity after you're like, oh, it, oh you're a Vanderpump Rule. Oh, you hate Tom too. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, so. it's like your hometown Do you see villain. his parents? So, no, I've never seen his parents, but I was like, I, I got to tell you. Because they're bad people. I mean, they, the mom must be bad too because the he was still dating ariana brought raquel to st louis we met know. the family mm-hmm. and they still have never reached out to ariana they were together for nine years so i uh, know I, yeah. oh no yes. i am with but you. he also mm-hmm. took a bunch of their money to put into his <laughs> restaurant so <laughs> He might, he's not the best son either, I guess. Maybe they just need to keep in touch just in hopes that they'll get it back. But it's like, I, I cringe during the reunion because they were showing like pictures of him and Rachel slash Raquel, whatever her name is. And there was a picture of them. And so you're like, oh, I know where that is. And so I was walking <laughs> with my husband and I just went, oh, I can't. And he goes, why? Like, we're just enjoying it. I'm like, this is just where... Tom and Raquel stood and I, I, I need to walk away. Now. It's tainted for me. And he's like, we're just going for a walk, babe. I'm like, I just can't, I can't anymore. So I totally, it brings people together. Now I got to check out Winter House. And now I, I, now I'm so intrigued now about what's happening at the Trixie Hotel. Let's see what happens. Yeah. But, Salt Lake. yeah. Oh, another bus moment. There's oh. another, not, not as epic, of course, no FBI no. Um, involvement, but a pretty good party bus moment. Oh my gosh. I mean, I feel like in Salt Lake, everything happens on that bus so it's uh it's always and I'm I'm excited for Beverly Hills to come back too so I'm a big Beverly Hills girl for Beverly Hills Housewives well there's uh, so much coming at us soon we got Beverly Hills Miami Potomac it's all coming back oh my so god soon. I know I don't know how I'm gonna fit it all in but I'm I'm gonna make it happen so and you guys have inspired Ooh. me <laughs> and um our first episode of our podcast we ever did was on an episode called Bully and Luanne De La Seps is in that episode God bless. God From bless Luann Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Countess. Yes. The Countess is there. So oh. that's like a nice um, tie in. Oh, no. That is perfect. I still am obsessed when she did her music videos for Money Can't Buy You Class. <laughs> and I still sometimes to make myself laugh, I'll be like, oh, gotta love Luann. So I, how do you guys feel about the New York reboot, though? Are you guys fans? Are we into it? What's happening? Have you seen it? We're fans. We're mm-hmm. watching it. I watch every episode. It's fine. But I just recently um, was hanging out with a friend and we watched some old New York these women, they can't come close. I need I more drinking. I need more mess. I need fight. Like these women are just too composed and too behaved and too like calculated and what their goals are. And so, and it's not fun. The vacations aren't fun because no one is drinking. It's like, they're just crying and trauma bonding, which, you know, we're getting to know these people. They're thrown into an impossible situation where we have high expectations. But, and it's fine, and I like them. It's just, they're too private. It's not the same. Kara and then they're just, me. well, I, I also feel like, you know, it is tough because those original ladies were of a generation where not everybody knew the housewife. They, it wasn't such an institution. So we were getting a little bit more of a nap, even though OC existed first. It's like we were getting a little bit more of a real reality. Yeah. And with these women, it's like they're producing themselves. They know what it's supposed to happen. They're nitpicking. They're, they're fighting over truly dumb shit. I mean, I love a fight over dumb shit on a reality show, but it's like, 
it's like, oh, you took her phone and now, you know, like, I don't know all this, like, it, it just feels like, oh, and I didn't like that comment you made the other day. It's not the same as like people falling into bushes and people calling people's shoes, their Frankenstein shoes. And like, you know, we just had so many good classics with the old, with the lady. I also will say it. I'm reverse ageist about the housewives. I like them to be older. I like them to have, have lived a life before they get on this show. And we just have a bunch of like women in their mid thirties on this current one. And it's like, I just want them a little older person. Oh, I totally, I totally agree. Like I said, I miss Luann. <laughs> I did. I loved like all of her stuff too. What was the- They were just like... out in the, well, no, yeah, Luann all... lied about mm -hmm. it, but she, you know, we caught her being slutty at least. Um, <laughs> I just want a little more mess. I'm a little more silly. And that's what the Salt Lake um, Motel episodes gave me, where I just want obscure fights that make no sense about <laughs> topics where no one should be fighting about. Like, I want slogans. I want catchphrases. I want silliness. And now it's just all about the glam and seeming better than someone else. And it's just, like, annoying to me. Yeah, it's a different But direction. I like it. Mm -hmm. No, I do too. Yeah, I, we mm -hmm. both are big New York lovers and so uh, like the city itself. So it's like, I always like to watch those shows because I like to see where they go with New York, what they're doing in New York, you know, but I'll give them another season. I'm loving Jenna Lyons. Uh, Me too. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. like Bryn. But, but that's know, because like... we love Jenna Lyons because she's chic and sexy and cool 100%. and we're obsessed with her, mm -hmm. but she's not giving yeah as a housewife she's just like drinking a shirley temple and silent in the corner <laughs> and going and going i love when i miss the drama it's like no baby that's not the assignment <laughs> love when i miss yes. the drama <laughs> yeah like do i i want gifts from her i want to be in her closet i want to have a yeah, yeah, time yeah. i you know i'll decorate a christmas tree with jenna and her family <laughs> but I, I just miss like turtle time. I want yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I watched the Cartagena episodes. I mean, Ramona is in a wheelchair going down the cobble streets <laughs> of Cartagena before they all shit themselves on a boat that was about to capsize. I mean, it, we it's but it's season one. Oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll give them some time to catch up to you know shitting on the floor Cartagena style. <laughs> yeah. I love Oh my God. Yes. I see that speaks to me. I love it. And to tie this in, what I love the most is that you guys are going to be here on November 9th. Please come. <laughs> Please come see this show. Even if you are a Bravo aficionado, maybe you like obviously Law and Order SVU. Maybe you don't even know, but you're like, hey, I need somewhere to go on November 9th. Get those tickets because they are selling. Reserved is already sold out. So we've got some general admission still available. And you can see these ladies, not in Andy's Clubhouse, but you will be here in Helium Comedy <laughs> Club St. Louis. Uh, what an upgrade. Let's see here. Now, um, before we head out, thank you so much for joining us. You guys have definitely given me a good laugh here in St. Louis. Uh, what I always tell people, we always have like a question at the end, like, what are you going to casually do now, now that this episode has ended? Oh, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Rush. I, I got to get ready quickly. Okay. Because my nephew actually lives around here and... Aww. I'm going to take him out to a little dinner. Ooh. I don't know. So he's going to pick me up and that'll be really cute. And then he'll come to our show. Um, oh, great. I think he's going to come. He said he has work early in the morning. I doubt it's that early, but he... <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so I'm really excited. And then Kara um, will probably get ready right now. And then she does sound check. She's, and I'm not allowed to be at sound check because I do cause problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, you passed through this sound check with flying colors, so you did great. Yeah, but I have an attitude. <laughs> I just, um, yeah, I have to be kept um, away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right, Kara. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, I'm I just kept gonna, away. <laughs> I'm probably gonna throw some SVU on my hotel TV while I do my hair, and then I'm gonna go to a sound check and hope everything goes smoothly, and then I just will drink wine by myself in the green room and wait for Lisa to get there. Oh my gosh. I love it. We got dinner plans. You got wine plans. It's it's great. <laughs> I feel like we have everything covered. Now I know what I'm supposed to watch after this. And now I'm supposed to get tickets to go see you guys at Helium Comedy Club at November 9th. So I Thank appreciate Thank you so the much for being you. the pluggiest uh, podcast <laughs> host of all time. I love it. A lot of times at the very end, they're like, where can they find you? Uh, look it up on the internet. Bye guys. <laughs> like, 
and this is great. <laughs> oh, no, my second major, I was a theater major, but my second major was in journalism and marketing, and they are all about the plugs. So yeah, I try to make it comical, it. though, because, of course, everybody's <laughs> like, we get it, Molly. We're going there on November 9th. <laughs> and I'm like, I want you to almost like whether you want to be there in spite or just our spite or honesty, whatever you want to do, go to the show. It's going to be Are super you going to come? So, oh, I'm going to be there. I'm actually. Okay, we'll see you there. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, it's my birthday month. So I turned 33 that Saturday before. So this is going to be a birthday treat to myself is to come see you guys. There we go. Love it. And maybe I'll bring my friends and we'll get the uh, cheesy moments of everybody liking Law no, Order SVU. Lately, <laughs> lately our, a lot of the listeners have been inspired by the Taylor Swift Eras tour and have been making friendship bracelets and they're so funny and people come by themselves and they meet other friends like we meet people at when we come back places that are like we met at your show last year and now we're friends and would come back together oh so my God. you know we're bringing people together over over sex crimes so come on down <laughs> We also heard our listeners are great tippers and they love hummus. So that's if that topic. sounds like you, get your butt to helium. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I appreciate you. I know you both have to go, but thank you so much for your time. And I'll see you on November 9th. Yay. Awesome. Bye, Bye. guys. Thanks, have a Molly. good one. Thank you.